Hallelujah. So good to have you with us today. Praise God, you wonderful people. Oh my, what a beautiful day it is today. Well, welcome. I'm James Davis of the Global Intercession Teams. Here we are for the celebration of the Messiah today. Ah, exciting. Hopefully everything goes good with our meeting today. Technically, there's been some struggles lately with the last Zoom update. So praise God, here we are. And we're moving forward in the Lord on this, the February 4th of 2023, the day that the Lord has made. Hebrew calendar, Shabbat, 13th day of the year 5783. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, the sun's shining here. It's supposed to heat up a little bit more than what it has been the last few days. I don't know about where you're at, but we pray 
that the light of the sun is having his way in you today. Oh, in that I'm seeing the mighty throne of God. I'm seeing the place of worship. I'm seeing the place where we can raise our praises up to him and thank him for who we are in him with everything he's done for us. He is the mighty God. Now with that, I think a bit of worship would really fit in well. So Connie Johnston, if you would, could you lead us in some worship today? Amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. All about God, my We praise you, oh, what a glory. We praise you. Lamb of God, and we lift up all the doors to our God, and we praise you, hallelujah, 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 praise you, hallelujah, hallelujah. Of all. Oh, you are glorious, you are wonderful, and your beauty is so lovely. Day, day. Here we glorify, hallelujah. Oh, you are wonderful, you are about a glory. And oh, we have no word to describe how, how beautiful you are. But we sing, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise our God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord of all, celebrating the land. Huh? Jesus, we praise you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord of all. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we give you praise, hallelujah, 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 we praise our God, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Yes, thank you, Connie. Hallelujah. Praising our God, our Heavenly Father. He is so good. So good he is. Oh my. Well, the parish uh, reading for this week has been Bashalach, which means when he's sent off, it's out of Exodus chapter 13, verse 17 through chapter 17, verse 16. We'll be reading most of it. I think we'll be skipping chapter 14. 14, the crossing of the Red Sea. Most people are pretty familiar with that. But it, there's topics in here that the Lord, uh, I believe, is desiring us to discuss today, and we just can't quite cover it all. So otherwise, we're going to start here today with Exodus chapter 13, verses 17 to 22. And again, I don't apologize for the amount of scripture that we read. It's, uh, my goodness, uh, there, there's no apology for reading scripture. Reading scripture stirs things, speaks to us. His Holy Spirit always has a message. He ties it all together as we have these sections from, from the Torah and the prophets and the New Testament. Um, he's amazing, the message that he gives us in the process of this all. So praise God that you're here that you're willing to participate in the reading of the word. You can also participate in the comments as well. 
as we're discussing things, feel free to, to uh, add your comments in the comment section on Facebook there. It really helps the situation out as well. So praise God. Exodus chapter 13 verses 17 to 22 says that when Pharaoh had let the people go, God didn't lead them by the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, lest perhaps the people change their minds when they see war and they return to Egypt. But God led the people around by the way of the wilderness, by the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went up armed out of the land of Egypt. Moses took the bones of Joseph with them, for he had made the children of Israel swear, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones away from here with you. They took their journey from Sukkoth and encamped in Upham in the edge of the wilderness. Yahweh went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them on their way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, and that they might go by day and by night. The pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night didn't depart from before the people. Well, we're going to jump into chapter 15 now, verses 1 through the rest of the chapter, I believe that. 51, wasn't it, Leslie? Leslie's going to pick that chapter up for us. Thank you. It's 1 through 27. Okay. So it looks like that is the whole chapter. So oh, yeah, here we go. Right. I'm thinking of another chapter we're going to Me read. Me too. So. <laughs> so here 15. we go. <laughs> okay. Then the Moses, then the Moses. Here we go. Let's take two. Then Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord and spoke, saying, they sang speaking. Isn't that interesting? I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and its rider are thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him. My father is God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has cast into the sea. His cap chosen captains also are drowned in the Red Sea. The depths have covered them. They sank to the bottom like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, has become glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, has dashed the enemy in pieces. And in the greatness of your excellence, you have overthrown those who rose against you. You sent forth your wrath. It consumed them like stubble. And with the blast of your nostrils, the waters were gathered together. The flood stood upright like a heap. The depths congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue. I will overtake. I will divide the spoil. My desire shall be satisfied on them. I will draw my sword. My hand shall destroy them. You blew with your wind. You and the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? You stretched out your right hand. And the earth swallowed them. <clears throat> You and your mercy have led forth the people whom you have redeemed. You have guided them in your strength to your holy habitation. The people will hear and be afraid. Sorrow will take hold of the inhabitants of Philistia. Uh, then the chiefs of Edom will be dismayed. The mighty men of Moab, trembling, will take hold of them. All the inhabitants of Canaan will melt away. Fear and dread will fall on them by the greatness of your arm. They will be as still as a stone till your people pass over, O Lord. Till the people pass over whom you have purchased, you will bring them in and plant them in the mountain of your inheritance. In the place, O Lord, which you have made for your own dwelling. The sanctuary, O Lord, which your hands have established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. Thus ends the song. 
For the horses of Pharaoh went with his chariots and his horsemen into the sea, and the Lord brought back the waters of the sea upon them. But the children of Israel went on dry ground in the midst of the sea. Then Miriam the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took the timbrel in her hand, and all the women went after her with timbrels and with dances. And Miriam answered them, Sing unto the Lord, sing unto the Lord a new song. He has triumphed gloriously, the horse and the rider thrown into the sea. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. Then they went out into the wilderness of Shur, and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Now when they came to Mara, they could not drink the waters of Mara, for they were bitter, which is what Mara means. Therefore the name of it was called Mara. And the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? So he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. When he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made a statute and an ordinance for them, and there he tested them, and said, If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God, and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians. For I am the Lord who heals you, Yahweh Rapha. Then they came to Elim, where there were twelve wells of water and seventy palms. So they camped there by the waters. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, well, let's go into Exodus chapter 16, verses 1 through 36. See what else is happening in this journey. Oh, and it says, They took their journey from Malim, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elim and Sinai, and the fifteenth day of the second month after their departing out of the land of Egypt. <clears throat> the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured <laughs> against Moses and against Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said to them, We wish that we had died by Yahweh's hand in the land of Egypt when we sat by the meat pots, when we ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. <clears throat> then Yahweh said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from the sky for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day that I may test them, whether they will walk in my law or not. It shall come to pass on the sixth day that they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. Moses and Aaron said to all the children of Israel, <clears throat> At evening you shall know that Yahweh has brought you out from the land of Egypt. In the morning, <clears throat> excuse me, you shall see Yahweh's glory because he hears your murmurings against Yahweh. Who are we that you murmur against us? Moses said, Now Yahweh will give you meat to eat in the evening, and in the morning bread to satisfy you, because Yahweh hears your murmurings which you murmur against him. And who are we? Your murmuring, murmurings are not against us, but against Yahweh. Moses said to Aaron, Tell all the congregation of the children of Israel, Come close to Yahweh, for he has heard your murmurings. As Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the children of Israel, they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, Yahweh's glory appeared in the cloud. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel. Speak to them, saying, At evening you shall eat meat, in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am Yahweh your God. In the evening quail came up and covered the camp, and in the morning the dew lay around the camp. When the dew that lay had gone, behold, on the surface of the wilderness was a small round thing, small as the frost on the ground. When the children of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they didn't know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread from which Yahweh has given you to eat. This is the thing which Yahweh has commanded. Gather of it every one according to his eating, an omer, a head, 
according to the number of your persons you shall take it, every man for those who are in his tent. The children of Israel did so, and some gathered more and some less. Now when they measured it with an omer, he who gathered much had nothing over, and he who had gathered little had no lack. They each gathered according to his eating. Moses said to them, Let no one leave of it until the morning. Notwithstanding, they didn't listen to Moses, but some of them left of it until the morning, so it bred worms and became foul, and Moses was angry with them. They gathered it morning by morning, every day according to his eating. When the sun grew hot, it melted. On the sixth day, they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for each one, and all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. He said to them, This is that which Yahweh has spoken. Tomorrow is a solemn rest, a holy Sabbath to Yahweh. Bake that which you want to bake, and boil that which you want to boil, and all that remains over lay up for yourselves to be kept until the morning. They laid it up until the morning as Moses ordered, and it didn't become foul, and there were no worms in it. Moses said, Eat that today, for today is a Sabbath to Yahweh. Today you shall not find it in the field. Six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day is the Sabbath, in it there shall be none. On the seventh day some of the people went out to gather, and they found none. Yahweh said to Moses, How long do you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? Behold, because Yahweh has given you the Sabbath, therefore he gives you on the sixth day the bread of two days. Everyone stay in his place. Let no one go out of his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. The house of Israel called its name manna, and it was like coriander seed, white, and its taste was like wafers with honey. Moses said, This is the thing which Yahweh has commanded. Let an omer full of it be kept throughout your generations, that they may see the bread with which I fed you in the wilderness when I brought you out of the land of Egypt. Moses said to Aaron, Take a pot and put an omer full of manna in it, and lay it up before Yahweh to be kept throughout your generations. As Yahweh commanded Moses, so Aaron laid it up before the testimony to be kept. The children of Israel ate the manna forty years until they came to an inhabited land. They ate the manna until they came to the borders of the land of Canaan. Now an omer is one-tenth of an ephah. Johnny Johnson is going to read for us Exodus chapter 17, verses 1 through 7, and then we'll discuss these scriptures. Thank you, Connie. <clears throat> Show them. Okay, there we go. <laughs> All right. Chapter 17. Yes, ma'am. Exodus. Okay. Then all the congregation of the children of Israel set out on their journey from the wilderness of sin, according to the commandment of the Lord, and camped in Rephidim. But there was no water for the people to drink. Therefore the people contended with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. So Moses said to them, Why do you contend with me? Why do you tempt the Lord? And the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, what is it you have brought us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord and said, what shall I do with these people? They were almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, go out before the people and take with you some of the elders of Israel also, take in your hand your rod which, with which you struck the river and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock in Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and the water will come out of it, and so that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. So he called the name of the place. Massa and Hibber, Hibia, oh, fiddle be, excuse me, Hib Hibidah, because of the contention of the children of Israel, because they tempted the Lord, saying, 
is the Lord among us or not? Oh, 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 oh. wow. The Lord among us or not. Oh, wow. Oh, blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth, Yeshua, our Messiah, and set everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Well, Leslie and Connie, <laughs> here we are with these scriptures today. What's the Spirit speaking out for us? Well, you know, there's a stick, and there's some water. And, and it's like, really, God? So, so this is, to me, this represents the earth, the trees of the earth, and then the waters of the earth, and from the sky fell food. I mean, God's pretty amazing that he did miracles, signs and wonders with a stick, some water, and his spoken word to produce food out of the sky for his children when they were in need. And and we worry about what? Yeah, exactly. And we worry it, about what? <laughs> kind of. You know, the complaining is a very big deal. And I <laughs> I just think that we need to watch our words again. Do we complain? Why does this happen? Why does that happen? Well, why am I going through this journey, Lord? Why? And the Lord is always with us. He never forsakes us. And many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. And I just encourage everyone to just be aware of complaining and don't even complain in your heart. Don't even complain in your heart. And if you get accused of being a Pollyanna or, oh, well, you always, you know, are looking for uh, this or that, like the good. Well, the light is there. If we don't see it, I'll tell you, ask the Lord to reveal it. He will. He'll, he'll give you manna from heaven. He will make miracles happen for you and in around you. And you have the favor mm -hmm. of a mighty God. You know, why worry? Just pray. It's easy peasy if 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 you just kind of get a grip around it and or not a grip around it. Well, you can grip around it too. You hold on to it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's one way to put it. You know, as James so rightly puts that if you could control your tongue, you could control your whole body. Yes. And that the tongue is like a rudder that guides a ship. It's a very small thing that it really, you know, can set you in the right course or it can set you on fire, the hell fire of hell. Wow. Yeah. And, and, you know, uh, this is the place that my mind always goes when it comes to the tongue is gossip and um, Christian gossip. If it's a prayer request and you're asking for details, honey, that's still gossip. That is not a prayer request. That is wanting to know what's going on. And it's none of your business. You don't need to know details in order to pray for someone. That's why the Lord gave you the Holy Spirit. We can pray in tongues. Holy Spirit knows everything. And so we can just say, Father God, you know everything concerning this matter. So, Father, we just thank you that, you know, we, we want... We want to have rule over ourselves. We want to have rule over our tongues and the words that come out of our mouth. Griping and complaining, fear comes up when you do that. You know, they were afraid that they were going to die, they and their children. I mean, that's a, that's a difficult place to be in. It wasn't that they weren't thirsty. They weren't making this up. Mm -hmm. They really had thirst. They were in a dire place or they wouldn't have complained. It is our nature to complain when we're hurting. He said, when you cry out to me, I will hear you and I will answer you. But there's a difference between crying out to God in faith and crying out to God in anger, doubt and unbelief and despair. 
And isn't that what seemed to occur? I mean, if we go all the way back, you know, uh, when they were leaving Egypt, uh, uh, here, here's this mighty struggle, this walk that they had to go. And what amazed me, I, 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 I picture the cloud and the pillar uh, leading them out uh, in the desert, but for some reason I forgot to picture, here was the verses, oh, as they were traveling from Egypt to the Red Sea, that the, the, it, the cloud and the pillar was leading them then, okay? Yeah. So then they get to this place, of course, where the enemy's right behind them, chasing them, and now the fear starts rising, even though God's been leading them all this time. Don't you think God's going to rescue you? But then they start complaining because where was their focus? Instead of on the cloud and the pillar, their focus was on the army that was chasing them. You know, so where do our fears, where do our complaints start arising more than anything else? Because we're focused on the wrong thing instead of on God who rescues us, who provides for us, who gives us safety and refuge on a continual basis. He was still there. Did they not realize that he was still there? Oh, no, because they weren't focused on him any longer. No. When they're out in the, then in the desert and they're dealing with the water situation, you know, they were focused on the bitter waters, you know, so focused on it that, whoa, what are we going to do? We're not going to survive. How many times in a day do we get to a point where we're in a point of struggle where we're so focused on the circumstance that we forget that our God's already taking care of us by faith? We should be able to see the, re, the what he's going to do for us in advance before it happens we trusting in him isn't that faith is trusting in what we don't see it's the victory on the other side he's going to take you through amen yeah <clears throat> and it's growing to that place of maturity you know i kind of always find it a little this whole story a little little funny because they're what two weeks out of slavery and it said just a, just a few days ago, last week, the week before, that they didn't know God. And and they're expecting him, them to trust him. It's like, I don't know you. I don't trust you. I don't know you. You know? And, and... Yeah, so, you know, it's like this situation that... Uh, um, uh, they had the, the riders and the horses behind them. Who the waters part, they get to the other side, boom, the armies are down now in the bottom of the sea, and all of a sudden the waters drown them all. Well, what do the people do? They get all excited. They start praising God. Here comes this song of Moses that they're all singing. They're shouting and praising God. Oh, what a wonderful God. What a wonderful God. And then how soon was it before a circumstance arises where they start wondering, why they're in the situation that they're in again and totally forget the rescue that God occurred. They can't praise them in the middle of the circumstance that they're struggling with because they're so hungry. Well, don't you think your God's going to rescue you again? Or have you already forgotten what he's already done for you? How many times do we do that when the circumstance arises we're in the midst of it we're struggling we're pulling out our hair you can see how much that's happened to me and and <laughs> and then you're asking god where are you yeah when are we going to be people of faith we're in the middle of the circumstances we don't doubt that our god's bringing our rescue we don't doubt that God's going to bring our provision. We don't doubt we're just in the middle of the situation, but God's already got it covered. Can you see that he's already got it covered in the midst of the circumstance or not? Yeah, yeah and we can't because our faith has to be exercised. Ooh. We have to activate it. We Ooh. have to exercise to get strong muscles, and our faith is a muscle that, and here's the example I mean, 40 years of exercising, learning to exercise, learning to trust. I don't trust you. Sorry. I don't know you. I don't trust you. And and God, even in, what, where does it say that you got to exercise your faith? The trying of your faith produces patience, and it must have its perfect work. That's in James. I'm thinking of the other one that I don't 
have it in my heart, um, the whole part of it. It produces patience, and patience must have its perfect work that you will be perfect and entire wanting nothing. Well, how do we want nothing? We let faith have its work in us. Faith, it's got to work. you got to let it work and, and go through those trials, go through those times of testing and <clears throat> falling down, scraping your knees, getting back up and asking God to help you. And, and look, look how much we've grown. Look at yourself. Look at yourself of where you were five years ago in your walk with the Lord. And look where now you're able to trust him in ways you've never been able to trust him before. Mm -hmm. He knows. He knows our weakness. He knows our frailty. And, and you know, we're, we're dealing with Jesus now, the incarnate flesh God man. Thank you. Because the big God seemed to have a short temper. <laughs> and he, he didn't like it very much when they didn't get him. It's like, I am so much your God what is wrong with y'all <laughs> you know it's like pew, pew. what is wrong with you can you not see that I'm helping you it's like the child you're trying to change their diaper and they're fighting you it's like stop fighting me I'm doing a good thing for you <sighs> it's like ah and that's I'm sure the way God feels towards us sometimes it's like oh my goodness oy vey <laughs> oh my goodness yeah and how, how many times do the leader our leaders feel the same way i mean i'm seeing moses here you know and uh and the people are thirsty so they're they're coming against moses he's saying why do you quarrel with me why do you test yahweh all right and 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 so it's this situation that if they're not receiving what they think they need to receive at just the right time. They think that they need to receive it. They, they're going to the leaders first, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, when, you know, and then they're, then they, then they're crying out to Yahweh and are, are, they're wanting to go back to Egypt where they came from. Well, that, that place was a, a place of, of slavery. That place was a place of, and, uh, and, and you're, uh, uh, you're you're complaining because you're struggling a little bit right now but what about the promises God has made for you you know God has made promises for all of us his word clearly explains the promises that he has for us but how yeah. many people in this world go to their government leaders for the fulfillment of those promises instead of relying upon God when he's the one who's promised them right I want to go back into hell because I don't know yeah. how to live in the new place of trusting God, depending on him. I did that over and over again because yeah, I didn't what, know what how. You to the place of bondage. Yeah. Come on now. There was flesh pots there. They forgot what they had to do to get that meat right. that was thrown to them like they were dogs. Right. <clears throat> they yes. forgot that part. Because now they're out in the wilderness with nothing to eat, no water to drink, and trusting this invisible God. They've never seen an invisible God before. All of their gods that they knew had form. Yeah, so here are the people at the end of this, this last verse that we read. Here are the people who um, uh, just came... <laughs> out of that separation of the Red Sea, they just came and saw the mighty victory that was there. They just came out of worship and praise, and they're in this situation where they're in need again, and they ask this crazy question, is Yahweh among us or not? <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> no Been wonder. there, done that. <laughs> oh, come on, now. what do you mean, is he there or not? Look at what he's already done. Look at what did. Come on, people. He is with you. Why, why are you doubting? Why are you? You just saw all of this. You know, and I, and I see it the same way when people are touched by God, 
a, a, a short time later, the enemy comes in and he says, oh, that wasn't God who did that for you. And then they start believing it. And then they lose whatever God gave them because they didn't have the faith to keep holding on to it. God, where are you? And God's saying, where are you? Where is your focus? What's happening here? Oh, yeah, there's something in the way. Yes. <laughs> and, and the Lord's telling me, I mean, he's told me several times already, but this is what he showed me some time ago. These are your problems. You see them? You hold them in your hand. You hold them really tight. And you keep them close to you because they're my problems. And when you put your problems, these are your problems. They're always there. They're right there. And my focus is on my problems. Stupid problems. I can't believe I have so many problems. And what the Lord wants us to do is is take our focus off of our problems and put our problem our focus on the problem solver now where are your problems they're still there but i don't see them anymore because my focus is on christ my focus is on my savior my focus is on my redeemer the my focus is on the problem solver who is able to make water come out of a rock who is able to rain down food out of heaven. And your problems are always going to be there. Just don't look at them. Does it make them go away? Well, sometimes you'll never know if you don't ever look at them. You know, seriously, you'll never know if those problems, the same problems are still there if you, if you don't look at them. If your focus is on the king of glory, the one who can do everything, Water from rocks, cloud to cover you in the sun, fire to keep you warm at night. I mean, what an amazing God. Walk through the water, I will be there, and through the flame. You'll not, no way, be drowned. You'll not, no way, be burned. For I am with you, fear not. Fear not, little flock. Yeah, so when the problems were still there and I focused on God, he provided the solution. I didn't have to do anything except trust in him. He provided the solution. The problems disappeared. Well, God, what a provider you are. Amen. What a provider and, you are. And as you look up and as you, you know, get your focus on, on uh, Jesus, then begin to praise him and praise him in the middle of, of whatever you're going through and you're absolutely right james the problems will be solved come on what a mighty god we serve what a mighty god we serve angels bow before him heaven and earth adore him what a mighty god we serve and when that set is gone and everything's clear and we're in our comfort zone again when the next set comes back what are you going to do? <laughs> Put your eyes in heaven. Look to Jesus. Yeah. Hear the joyful sound. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who did give us the Torah of truth. Also gave us Yeshua, our Messiah, and said everlasting life in our midst. Oh, blessed art thou, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Well, let's go to the prophet readings then. We're going to be in the book of Judges, chapter 4, verses 4 to 24. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who has chosen good prophets and was pleased with their words that were uttered with truth. Blessed are you, Adonai, who chooses the Torah and Moses, God's servant, and Israel, God's people, and the prophets of truth and righteousness. And Connie's going to read for us Judges chapter 4, verses uh, 4 through 24. Wow, Amen. there's a lot of words there. <laughs> now, 
Now, Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lebedo, was judging Israel at that time. And she sat under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the mountains of Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. Then she sent and called for Barak, the son of Abinoth from Kedesh in Nephadela, and said to him, Has not the Lord God of Israel commanded, go and deploy troops at Mount Tabor? Take with you 10,000 men of the sons of Naphtali and of the sons of Zebanon. And against you, I will deploy Sisteria, the commander of Jebin's army and his chariots and his multitude at the river Keshem, and I will deliver him into your hand. And Barak said to her, if you will go with me, then I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. So she said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, there will be no glory for you in the journey that you are taking. For the Lord will sell Sistera into the hands of a woman. Then Deborah arose and went with Barak. Barak to Kadesh. And Barak said, called Zebulun and Nephtali to Keshek. And he went up with 10,000 men under his command, and Deborah went with him. Now Heber, the Kenite of the children of Horeb, the father in law of Moses, had separated himself from the Kenite. Uh, Kenites and pitched his tent near the Terebeth tree at Zem, Zen, and Fiddle Zen Nanum, which is beside Kedesh. Please forgive my pronunciation. <laughs> Everyone in heaven and on earth. Yes, Alleluia. And they reported to. to Sistera, that Barak, the son of Abinoth, had gone up to Mount Tabor. So Sistera gathered together all his chariots, 900 chariots of iron, and all the people who were with him from Harith, Hereseth, Hagum, to the river Kishim. And Deborah said to Barak, up, for this is the day which the Lord, in which the Lord has delivered Sistera into your hand. Has not the Lord gone out before you? So Barak went, or Barak went down from Mount Tabor with 10,000 men following him. And the Lord routed Sistera and all of his chariots and all of his army with the edge of the sword before Barak and Sistera alighted from his chariot and fled away on foot. But Barak pursued the chariots under the army as far as Heraseth, Hagalum, and the army of Sistera fell by the edge of the sword. Not a man was left. Hallelujah. Oh, just one moment. 24. I'm sorry. I, we're going to take it to the end of the chapter. However, Sistera had fled away on foot to the tent of Jerel, the wife of Hibber, the Kenite. And there, and there was peace between Zeven, king of Hazor, and the house of Hibber, the Canaanite. And Jerel went out to meet Sister and said to him, Turn aside, my lord, turn aside to me, do not fear. And when he had turned aside with her into the tent, she covered him with a blanket. Then he said, Please give me a little water to drink, for I'm thirsty. 
So she opened a jug of milk, gave him a drink and covered him. And he said to her, stand at the door of the tent. And if any man comes and inquires of you and says, is there any man here? You shall say no. Then Jael, Jael Hibber's wife took a tent peg and took a hammer in her hand and went softly to him and drove the peg into his temple. And it went down into the ground and he was fast asleep and weary. So he died. And then as Barak pursued Sistera, Jarel came out to meet him and said to him, come, I will show you the man whom you seek. And when he went into her tent, there lay Sistera, dead on the ground, oh, excuse me, dead with the peg in his temple. So on that day, God subdued Jebin, king of Canaan, in the presence of the children of Israel. And the hand of the children of Israel grew stronger and stronger against Jabin, king of Canaan, until they had destroyed Jabin, king of Canaan. Amen. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> well, Leslie and Connie, what's this story? How does this tie in to what we've been talking about with Moses and the people of God? I don't know, but that's one gutsy barad. <laughs> <laughs> She was, the Lord took her the most unlikely one and a woman. And in that time, women were not, you know, looked upon like they are today as any kind of equality at all. You know, even that they were pretty much in such a, a place that they were kind of put aside and they did their job and and um, they certainly weren't involved in the war of what was going on, but she, but she was so fearless. I mean, she is amazing. And she went, and this is exactly what Deborah told that general, Barack. And I, I please again forgive me for how badly I pronounce words. Didn't have phonetics. You're not, you're not alone. We all struggle. <laughs> um, the general, you know, would have not ever thought that this lady would. And what she did was, wow, she snuck up on this guy when he was sleeping and just did it and took care of things. So I just. And the general, just as Deborah said, would not get the glory of it. Yeah. And um, because... Yeah, I'm just thinking, you know, all that pro prophesying. There you go. And and Deborah prophesied mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. over the situation because Barak would not go with to battle without her help. It's like, really? Yes. Really? You know? She's a prophetess and everybody came to her out under the tree. It's not like she would go around town and, and, you know, offer her prophecies to people. They sought her out. And he came and sought her out. Yeah. Ooh, there might be a lesson in that. But... Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, you know, there's a, you don't know, but there is a famous, um, Hebrew prayer of God, you, I'm so thankful that you didn't make me a woman. And it's not a derogatory prayer, but it's one in honor of women because of all of the work they do. Women had to wear dark garments where the men got to wear light garments. And it's so that their form could not be seen in the sun. And <clears throat> that was one of the curses that they had on them. They had their monthly. They had raising of children. They had the packing of tents. They had the, the Proverbs 31, which is doing the work. The men did the ruling. The women tended the fields. The women tended the flocks. The women tended everything. They did everything. And and finances and all. 
Yeah. finances and everything they brought in the wealth they brought in they did everything so that their husbands could study torah and rule and govern mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and so they were they were honored more than what we think you know we've been we've been told that they weren't honored but they were because they did everything they did everything and the men knew it Thank God for the women. The women, men went to war. Yeah. The women did everything else. So, so you know, here's this story about this woman of God who, who tells Barak because he would not go into battle without her there. You're not going to get any glory out of this battle. A woman's going to take it. And God raised up Jael just to do that. And, you know, he gave her the wisdom to give him milk and not water because it made him sleepy. Yes. I, I, thank you. I saw that too. Yes. Made him sleepy. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if she didn't walk around the room going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised at all. <laughs> you know lulling him to sleep, giving him a cushion to lay his head on, bringing a cover to cover him. So you it's like, oh, Deborah, who made a mistake. A prophet here. She was a leader. She was hearing the word of God of what was going to take place in advance so that she could lead and God pe guide people into the right position at the right time to fulfill what God had already promised. Mm -hmm. Wasn't that the same thing that Moses did? When the yeah. people oh, were complaining, God had already spoken to Moses, telling him how he was going to provide the answer for the people's complaints. Because many times as the people complained, Moses told them exactly what the Lord was going to provide, and then it was provided. Mm -hmm. When the leaders are hearing the word of God. They know in advance what must be done to see what God has promised to be manifested. How important is it for us to hear the word of God, that rhema spoken word of God for our present situation that yes. we're in to help even others step into the right position for the manifestation to occur. Lord, send us the right leaders with the right words yes. at the right times to lead and guide us into position for the manifestation, manifestation of your mighty, powerful works to be done on earth for your glory. Amen. 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 And, and if you, you know, later today, because this is, I mean, Shabbat is a time to, he said, I don't want you getting out of your tents. If we look back into the Exodus story, rest. And uh, it's a time to study the word, but read this, read the story of the battle that took place. It's amazing. The stars fought. Heaven, that, that's the angelic hosts. You, you know, translate scripture by scripture and it says the angels are stars and they actually did the battle and the rain came and made, they were up on a hill and the, forces couldn't get up the hill because they kept sliding in the mud. But it had to have been a torrential rain to have come. And the story is like, oh my goodness. And then after this battle, this man runs and hides in jail's tent. What a boo-boo he made. So, you know, it's just pretty amazing how God, when we, it's the same, the water, <laughs> the stick. It's like, really? Because the staff also represents a scepter. It's a, it's a rulership, leadership, a rod of iron. Yeshua talks about us having his rod of iron in the Revelation. Yes. Hallelujah. 
Wow. Yeah, so the Lord does tie things together amazingly. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Let's go to the New Testament. After the reading of the New Testament and our discussion, we're going to celebrate the communion table. So those of you who do know the Messiah. Messiah Jesus, as your Lord and Savior, I pray that you have some fruit of the vine and some bread ready for that. And if you do not know Jesus as the Messiah, I pray that this is the day the Lord has made where you can rejoice and be glad in what he has to offer you, that you'll accept him as your Lord, the ruler, the king of your life, and as Savior, the one who's providing you the cover for all of your sins so that you can be forgiven to have this mighty fellowship with our Heavenly Father as we do who are gathered here together today. So hallelujah, blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who gave to us the Messiah Jesus and the commandments of the new covenant. Blessed are you, Lord, giver of the new covenant. And Leslie Bruce is going to read for us out of John chapter 6, verses 15 through the end. the end of the chapter, which is 71. A few verses. So ready, hang on ready, to your horses. <laughs> <laughs> and here we go. Therefore, Connie, when Jesus perceived that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he departed again to the mountain by himself alone. Now when evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into the boat, and went over the sea toward Capernaum. And it was already dark, and Jesus had not come to them. Then the sea arose, because a great wind was blowing. So when they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and drawing near to the boat. And they were afraid. But he said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. Then they willingly received him into the boat, and immediately the boat was at the land where they were going. On the following day, when the people who were standing on the other side of the sea saw that there was no other boat there except that one which his disciples had entered, and that Jesus had not entered that boat when his disciples had, but his disciples had gone away alone, however, other boats came along. Alone, however, other boats came from Tiberias near the place where they ate bread after the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they also got into boats and came to Capernaum seeking Jesus. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them and said, Most assuredly, I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set his seal on him. Then they said to him, What shall we do what, that we may work the works of God? And Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. Therefore they said to him, What sign will you perform then, that we may see it and believe you? What work will you do? Our fathers ate the manna in the desert, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all he has given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me, that all who receive, and that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life. 
and I will raise him up at the last day. The Jews then complained about him because he said, I am the bread of heaven that comes down from heaven. And they said, Is it not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose mother and father we know? How is it then that he says, I have come down from heaven? And Jesus therefore answered and said to them, Do not murmur among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all, and they shall all be taught by God. Therefore, everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and are dead. And this is the bread which comes down from heaven, that one may eat of it and not die. <clears throat> I am the living bread which comes down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As a living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, he, so he who feeds on me will live because he, of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. These things he said in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, they said, This is a hard saying. Who can understand it? Then Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this. And he said to them, Does this offend you? What then if you should see the Son of Man ascend from where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe, and who would betray him. And he said, Therefore I have said to you that no one can come to me unless he has granted, it has been granted to him by my Father. From that time many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Then Jesus said to the twelve, Do you also want to go away? But Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them, I did not choose you. Did I not choose you? the twelve, and one of you is a devil. He spoke of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for it is he who would betray him, being one of the twelve. Thank you, Leslie. We're going to jump to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 through 5, and it says, Now I would not have you ignorant, brothers, that our fathers were all under the cloud and all pressed through the sea, and were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank of a spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Mm -hmm. However, with most of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Oh, blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who gave to us the word of truth and planted everlasting life in our midst. Blessed are you, Lord, giver of the new covenant. Oh, Leslie and Connie, we, we, we hear the, uh, uh, the, the Lord's Supper in the midst of this. We see the bread. We see the, 
the blood. We see this whole situation. How does this tie into what we've discussed? And uh, how, how did that, those last verses of uh, bringing Moses back up into the situation tie into the rock who was Christ? It's amazing all the type and shadow yeah. Yeah. of the baptism in the Red Sea, the bread from he heaven who is Yeshua. The, the stick, the tree that was thrown into the bitter waters at Mara, that made the water sweet. When we embrace the cross, our lives become sweet. When we die to ourselves, we become alive, fully alive. The, the, the positive, negative, the, the, the opposite forces of the kingdom of heaven, how to die is gain. Amen. We are a supernatural people and bread of life bread of heaven when jesus came and gave himself that became our life eternal and it is totally supernatural we must begin as god's bride to walk into a place of like James was saying, listening to the Holy Spirit, to the place where we go, where he goes, we listen to his voice. We know him and we know that we are not our own, but we are, we belong to Jesus and we are going with him into places and doing things that we never thought we would be doing, but this is our new place in him. This is, this is the supernatural walk we're called to. And the, the living, I put down, bread of life. Um, there is the flesh, the very walking in the flesh, in the very life of Jesus. And the blood of the lamb goes over us and through us and in front of us to go. This is a very... Ooh, I, I just, whew, it's just so wonderful and so amazing. And so on earth as it is in heaven, yes. So by the power of the blood, the life that's in the blood, the life that's in, in the Lord's body, that we are coming into this place of his fullness and that we are knowing him in a way that we are are one with him. This is the oneness. This is the glory. This is the place of eternal life. And we have, we are now coming into a greater understanding and manifestation of, of who he is in us. Yes. Yeah. So what we see in this is we see God's provision and in everything that God has provided is the that is what was fulfilled in the Messiah. Yeah. The manna from heaven. Yes. The Messiah is that bread, is that manna. The sweet water, the Messiah. And the spirit that we have through the Messiah is that sweet water. He said, come to me and thirst no more. How sweet it is. How wonderful it is that everything that we read in scripture leads directly to who the Messiah is, the provision God has for us, this eternal life, all of his promises that have been fulfilled through the Messiah are ours when we confess him as Lord and Savior. Yes, Jesus. No wonder we have the reminder of it all at the communion table, the communion of fellowship with each other as we reunite as one body, but fellowship with him as we are one with him, yeah. where our spirit and his spirit are united together in fellowship so that we can hear his voice, be guided by his voice, and know in advance the provision that's on its way. Eternal life. 
Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this place that we're in. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who gave to us the word of truth and planted everlasting life in our midst. Blessed are you, Lord, giver of the new covenant. This is the time to celebrate the communion table. I pray that you're ready. Connie's going to lead us in that. Thank you, Connie. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he would, was betrayed, took bread. And in the same, <clears throat> when he given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Hallelujah. And in the same manner, thank you, Lord, for your body. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your living bread, for the, that you are the bread of heaven. And that as we eat, eat of this communion and this bread that we take in, you, who you are to us and who you are in us in Jesus' name. And in the same manner in which, oh, just a minute, in the same manner, he also took the cup of after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Thank you, Jesus.
Leslie, Connie, closing comments for the day. The revelation that Jesus is giving us right now um, and downloading from heaven, like the manna from heaven, because he is the bread of heaven, is so glorious. And I think I, I just want to encourage everybody to just meditate on all that you've heard from us today and especially not from us personally but from what holy spirit has spoken through us because this is going to come into your life in your situation and bring miraculous changes breakthroughs more than you can ask or think so please please be encouraged because all hope is in in Jesus and all that who we are and it's just an amazing place to be <laughs> soaking yeah. up just soaking up the life of God right now that that river of life that living water that he's just pouring out into us and through us and into this place this this zoom call this Facebook uh, place it, wherever we are, wherever you're you're hearing us and seeing us it could be we have a number of venues so <laughs> media venues but i'm just saying receive all that he has for you because things are changing and the light is glorious arise shine for your light has come amen amen and the glory of the lord is risen upon you yes 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 let his glory shine out of you that is why we've been, you know, for this purpose, Christ was revealed to destroy all the works of the evil one. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. And that's why he saved you so that you, he's given you authority to trample on the evil one, to trample on the scorpions and the serpents. He's put it in our hands to do it. Not for us to say, oh, Jesus, help me. Oh, Jesus, help me. He said, you do it. I did my part. I died on the cross. You didn't have to do that. Now you rule and reign. Yeah, so you let your glory shine because your glory is the Lord's glory in you that is shining out. Yeah. Oh, taking ownership of your relationship with him. That powerful relationship where the Holy Spirit is overflowing your life to the point like I said, filled and overflowing out of your life to the point that your glory is his glory and his glory is your glory and it follows you and leads you wherever you go. Wherever you go, with whomever you come in contact with. Even if it's at the grocery store or at the where you where you're filling up to get gas and there's somebody on the other side of the pump and the lord tells you to talk to them and oh wherever you go whatever you do or it's it's even with your spouse or your or your brother or your sister or your mother or your father or whomever every person you come in contact with is a ministry appointment where the lord's given you his glory to shine out from you amen don't take it lightly. Don't complain for your circumstances. Oh, well, come Lord on. Has already promised the other side where he's carrying you through the circumstances because it's not about you as much as it's about the people that you're taking his glory to in the middle 
of the circumstances. It's your testimony of his power in the middle of the circumstance that shines out his glory. Come on. Yes, amen. And the Lord, the Lord just said, as James was um, sharing that, that, <clears throat> that he brings us through but he, we are, we have to come through these places because we need the testimony yeah. because he's going to bring us through. And the testimony is going to bring his life and his glory. And out of that glory will come, he will come the manifestation of Jesus yeah. in the lives of others and draw them to himself. There's many of you like myself, and I'm looking at one person who's joined us in the comments there on Facebook Live even, who was brought out of the deathbed to life as a testimony of God's yeah. power, his might, his strength, his healing, and how people were touched through that testimony even in the moment of the rescue. Amen. Even in the moment. So the moment you're in that seems so heavy, the moment you're in that seems so upsetting and full of turmoil and, and, and illness and, and where the, you think the enemy is having his way in so much is the exact moment, the exact point that God will provide the rescue for you as the testimony to those who are watching you of his might and his power. Yes. So we thank you for joining us today. We thank you for being in this room. I thank Leslie and Connie for the way they're led by the Spirit to, to speak into this situation each week too. So your presence with us online here today wasn't by accident. Hallelujah wasn't by accident so thank you for your presence today thank you for watching the replay those of you who are watching the replay who weren't watching it live or, or those of you who joined live but you joined late you want to go back and you didn't want to miss anything so you're watching the replay praise god for you hallelujah yeah. share this word with somebody if you know that it's going to help them those who the lord puts in your heart that oh they need to hear this word that was spoken today that the lord spoke in the midst of this situation share it with someone else as well give us your testimony communicate with us we gather throughout the week as well in many different ways uh, uh communicate with us we'd love to have you join us in the middle of the week but thank you again for joining us this day oh may yahweh bless you and keep you yahweh make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you yahweh lift up his face toward you and give you peace Thank you for the mighty blessing that you are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. See you again next week. If we don't see you before then, hallelujah. Have a blessed day. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you, Connie.